a couple of projects in Scratch, you probably realize that most of them have sprites that move like many real life objects or interact with each other like real life physics. So the skills of building this behavior is very, very important. In some of my games, you've seen that, uh, you've seen that they have real life physics. For example, the feeding seagulls. But guys, I read some of my comments and some of them say, uh, Scratch is not a real programming. Uh, Scra Scratch is not real game development. I use Unity. Huh? I use Unreal. Huh? Guys, when you're learning to program and somebody says such a thing to you, just ignore them. Guys, that just means they're bragging. They simply don't understand that what the value of what we're learning. So keep watching and keep learning complex things in a fun way. Today I want to go, go through some common and very important concepts that you will use in your game. And these concepts are game loop, scrolling, and physics of jumping. As an example, I want to show you one very old and popular game that used these concepts very well. example old-fashioned games and not games that are popular right now first it's really easy to it's way easier to understand old-fashioned games from new games because in new games there's a lot of extra graphics and realistic things and second the principles are the same so if you know the principles of the old-fashioned games then it'll be really easy for you to learn to make m more complex things all right let's get started Let's talk a little about a little about game loop and its correct implementation. One of the first and key things that a game has is a game loop. Of course, there not might be just one loop in games and other programs too, but there may be many. But right now I'm talking about game loop. But the game loop is the main game loop in, is the main loop in your game and it sends broadcast messages to the other to the other parts of the game and trigger other processes such as such as update the screen, check for collision, check positions and so on. And if you don't use it correctly, then your program might not work or be very slow, which will result to not working at all. So how do you implement the game loop the correct way? When you build your game, I recommend you to create an empty sprite and call it something like game setup and add global commands here. A game loop is a global process for the entire game. Let's add it here. Then instead of adding separate loops for each sprite after the green flag is clicked, we will be adding our broadcast messages inside our game loop.
That's it. So you got it. Now you know what a game loop is and how to implement it. Now let's talk about scrolling. As you understand, our game field is bounded by our screen. But there's not really many games that have screen borders. And what I mean by game borders is like, for example, in Fortnite, it's not only like your screen is everything you can see. You can go around and explore. Whereas in, for example, tank game, it's only in the screen and you can't go f explore further around. And usually in computer games, we can go around and explore and have a feeling that it's the world around us. So how do you do that when you build your Scratch game? To build this kind of feeling, we will use the scrolling concept. The key principle of this concept is that your game is bounded by the screen, but the game world is moving too. And this is called scrolling. There are different effects like X scrolling, like Y scrolling, and also different techniques to implement scrolling effect. But today we're gonna learn only one technique that is commonly used in Scratch. Here's the first common technique to do scrolling. You'll need at least two sprites and they will be connected and one of them will have offset. So let's create our sprite and add this and add these simple commands. This number depends on sprite position. This will be the first sprite in our scrolling set. It has the position zero. The next one will be the first, the second, etc. Now all you need is just duplicate your sprite and let's flip it horizontally so they will be connected ideally. Now let's just add key handlers. Let's also change its color just to see how it works. Then we'll change it back. As you can see, our sprites are connected and we can move them both back and forward. In the same way, we can add more sprites to our set and make them work by only changing one number. Easy and cool, right? But if you see the small piece of our sprite is visible even when we move them out of the screen. This is because of scratch specific behavior and how it keeps sprites from going outside the stage area. We can easily fix that by adding these couple commands. But as you can see, the small gap is visible when you're at the end. You can fix that by adding border, for example. So everything works fine. Let's just change colors back to normal for all sprites. Cool, we have very smooth scrolling now. Now let me show you how to make an infinite scrolling.
Easy, right? Okay, so so far we learned two of our three subjects. And the last one left is physics of jumping. And again, there are many different techniques, and but I want to show you a couple. The first and very easy implementation is here. The easiest approach to make your sprite jump are these simple commands. So once you click up button, your sprite will teleport up and then fall down. Easy, right? And now let's see how to implement more physically realistic jumping with gravity effect. That's it guys, we covered, we covered all three of our very important subjects. Keep watching, keep learning, and keep creating. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you.